Hello and welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix reaction. Here we are in 2024 with the fourth round of this season. And I am joined in by no one this time. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Ajax couldn't make it today. So I'm going to be the only one here. Yeah, doing the reaction. Um, yeah, unfortunate news for Ajax. Unfortunately, yes. He has to take some time off these these recordings. So, yeah, uh, we wish you well, obviously. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a few, few recordings in the future alone. And we're going to probably uh, do them together as well again after that. Anyways, Japanese memory reaction. Well, um, since I'm alone here, I'm just going <laughs> to talk uh, about it for 15 minutes while going for our predictions as well. Anyways, um, yeah. Japan, not my favorite circuit ever, but I guess drivers like it, some other people right, like it, so, uh, well, it deserves to be on the calendar more than Miami, for example, obviously. Yeah. Um, let's get into qualifying first, shall we? Um, P1, ball position, is Max Verstappen. Well, no surprise there, honestly. <laughs> Three points for us, as everyone expected Max could have to be on pole, but he got pulled by like 66 thousand of a second, so a very, very close margin there. Uh, which is very interesting. Uh, Checo Perez actually was P2, was able to be very close to Max, but unfortunately, in that last chicane, lost that tenth of a second to pole position. So, unfortunately, Perez couldn't, couldn't beat Max, even though he was so close to getting pole. Um, mentioning Perez at P2, so no points here. But P3 was, in reality, Lando Norris. So I got a McLaren there, just the wrong one, unfortunately. Uh, PS3 is a wrong one. And Perez, very close for Ajax there. But unfortunately, no points for either, either of us. So P4 was, in reality, Carl Sainz. I have no idea how that get this right, but um, I'll take the point. <laughs> Oh, okay, this is such a random prediction that I actually go right. <laughs> yeah, um, Carl Sainz, uh, P4, very good job in qualifying. Unfortunately, uh, for it looked very, very slow in qualifying for some reason. I expected him to be a little quicker than McLaren, at least based on my predictions, but it seemed like that Ferrari was just slower than McLaren in qualifying, but faster in the race. So it was, a, it was an interesting thing compared to the last year's, for example. Especially 2022 when Charles had the destroyed tires at the end of the race. And now he's the, like, one of the two drivers who did a one stop, somehow made it work and, and finished the B4. Impressive from Charles there, and especially Ferrari. Just uh, farm tire management is very impressive. Uh, B5, uh, Fernando Alonso, uh, very, very unexpected. Top five, at least from, from my perspective. I didn't, I didn't expect uh, Astons to be, well, quick here even though they bring upgrade they brought upgrades obviously i still didn't expect them to be any quick and uh yeah uh at least it one uh, one car was up there i mean if if, if it was two last strolls we probably wouldn't talk about aston being a good car but yeah they get a one capable driver and that's fernando alonso being in the top five and qualifying very good job from him well, um, any notable mentions from the qualifying? I think Yuki, P10, uh, qualifying Daniel four times in a row. I'm making the Q3 once again. Very good job from him on his in his home Grand Prix. Uh, Holkamer, P12, kind of good. Baltas had a very good qualifying as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, Logan was very unimpressive once again. And uh, just, yeah, Williams in the all in all, were not very impressive, but I'll get to that later. Um, yeah, Grand Prix. Well, um, since I missed the quality, I just had to watch the or the highlights, actually know what happened in the Grand Prix, so I can talk about it more in depth. So, yeah. Uh, well, we got the red flag, obviously, at the start, uh, which, I mean, <laughs> Daniel, uh, well, not the greatest not the greatest uh, positioning there, obviously, was having last roll on his left side, but yeah, I just didn't look at all on his right mirror, and I just couldn't see Alban, and both crashed, red flag, 
we wait for half an hour and then you know, just you know, uh, another restart. Obviously, Max just keeps the lead because that's what he does. And yeah, the uh, rest of the Grand Prix was just the strategy battle with some interesting moves from uh, in the midfield. Obviously, uh, yeah, Yuki and Lance Roll doing some crazy moves in those Senna, how, how they call Schumacher S's, I think, in Suzuka. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy overtakes there, but obviously, uh, the, the tires were the big talking point in this race. They were, uh, degrading pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, only two drivers managed a one stop race in this, uh, this Grand Prix, which is, uh, yeah, a good thing for Formula One that we have some different strategies and yeah, some teams can manage the strategies well, like Ferrari, which is the weird thing to say, right? Because Ferrari were infamous for their uh, <laughs> questionable strategy moves, but this time they're just shining pretty much every single race at this point, while the other teams, most notably Mercedes, just, well, what was that, <laughs> what was that strategy? I mean, towards the end, they were, they were all right, but they just didn't didn't have any potential in the strategy. McLaren, another good mention for fumbling a strategy. Norris having a real chance for a podium, finish P5 just because of a strategy. Nothing really to say there. Uh, Lano had a good weekend, just not the greatest strategy team, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Uh, Fernando had a interesting strategy. They, they played it pretty bold. Uh, soft tires at the start, and then just well, he pretty much was in that area of P5, P6 for the entire race. Uh, held off Piastri towards the end, just so Russell could overtake him in the last laps. Um, yeah, Yuki had a pretty lonely race in P10 there. And there's the Hasses, I think, behind him. Uh, Holcomer finished like six seconds behind Yuki despite having an awful start. Uh, well, off a restart after red flag, probably uh, points at the table for Haas, but unfortunately for uh, Hulkenberg, with those issues at the restart, uh, well, nothing ever can go uh, without any mistakes from the Haas team, even though they're having a good season so far. Well, good season. Well, they had a great season compared to those last season they had, last seasons they had. But yeah, uh, still not great. Still have still have some some areas to improve in obviously um all their cars even though it's uh all seven fastest car i would say at the moment still could be better i mean at least top of the midfield could be the their aim for the for the develop, development race obviously uh the torosso team is kind of had maybe thanks to yuki because daniel is not really there at the moment, but I still feel like even yeah, you know, even with two Daniel Ricardos, I feel still feel like they would kind of be ahead of uh, ahead of Haas in that sense that Daniel would be driving better against another version of himself that wouldn't be beating him and destroying his confidence once again. I just feel like that way they would score points. So yeah. Um, no, uh, that interesting bits of battle was there, yeah. Uh, with between like four or five teams, like five different drivers and the in the pits at the same time, uh, with Stroll and Sunoda gaining places in that whole thingy, which had which had a uh, another sour pit stop with a questionable time. I mean, it's better than the than those uh, tens of seconds long pit stop that they had in their recent races, but still not the greatest pit stop ever. I mean, at least it was under 10 seconds this time, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to mention. Well, Sargent was the only William in the race, and he always crashed once again. Yeah, uh, not looking great for Sargent. I'm really, really uh, worried that he may lose his seat even before the season ends at this rate. Um, uh, talking about the predictions themselves, P1, obviously, Max Verstappen, that's correct. Good job from, um, from Ajax there, who got P2 as well. So, well, um, I got P3, so <laughs> unfortunately, that, that's, uh, that's the case. And, 
And yeah, um, well, <laughs> kind of traded points there, even though he, he got the extra bold thingy with Perez being in P2, which actually was correct. He didn't gain points over me because I gained, because I gained points, uh, a point for science in P3. It was a good prediction from my side. I just I didn't expect Perez to be there. Leclerc to, well, uh, Charles, I mean, qualifying was awful. Let's be honest. I mean, we expect him to be out of science. Uh, and he got out qualified once again and, well, beaten in the race as well. As Charles had the one stop strategy against the two stop, this was just not really feasible to uh, beat Charles there. And just how it went before Charles Leclerc a good drive on Sunday just overall pretty pretty forgettable weekend for Charles I I'm pretty sure he he doesn't really think that was a good weekend from him and he will really try to uh, improve over the next few races and B5 in reality was uh, Lando Norris so I got the McLaren there once again just the wrong one so no points for P4 or P5 for us, still in the lead for us <laughs> for some reason, which probably will change as the fastest lap goes to Max Verstappen. So actually, TJX is getting points over me here, which is good. I don't want him. I don't want him to lose the title hopes this early on. Uh, but when you get to the least impressive team, this is difficult. Um, there are some good mentions. Obviously, Mercedes is always a mention, but I, we can we don't really expect Mercedes to be a decent team anymore. We kind of kind of expect Mercedes to be that really really mediocre team going to Suzuka. Uh, I expected them to well one of them to be out in Q two, and it almost happened actually, but it didn't in the end. Um, yeah, um, Sauber is a good mention. Every single race, pretty much, they just keep fumbling the points chances. Even though this race probably didn't have any points on the table, still they just always have a bad weekend for some for some reason. Um, McLaren, I mean, we expected them to be better, but they still weren't like super bad. They were just not very impressive, but not the not deserving of the least impressive team by any stretch of imagination. Has they're pretty much where where we expected them to be. Obviously, I I got them for my most impressive team and driver, which I mean didn't really uh, translate into being the truth, but whatever. Red Bull they're gonna want to in qualifying and the race. I don't think that that's not impressive. Uh, Aston Martin, I mean, uh, well they brought upgrades. They still got a good amount of points from Alonso. Just stroll. I think that's most was not a stroll, not, not Aston Martin not performing. I think that the car was better than Mercedes this weekend. It's just stroll not being there. Kind of ruins the, well, the constructor's chances as they're still, I think, behind Mercedes by one point, if I'm being correct. Which is, I mean, considering if they had two Alonso's last season, they would probably finish P2 in the constructors. This year, it's looking like they're going to finish P5 because of last row. Well, they could finish at least P4 with two Alonzos. Well, uh, unfortunately for them. Uh, Tarasso, I mean, so they got points. Uh, well, that's kind of what we expected. Ricardo was mediocre, kind of. I mean, it was close to Yuki qualifying, but then the crash. That's just not what you want uh, when you win the Red Bull seat. Which obviously, it's probably not going to be on the table anymore. Uh, Ferrari, good weekend from them, not, not from really to say there, they're not a least impressive team. Then we get to do Williams and Alpine, those two last two teams that I saved for the finale. Alpine, they're obviously not expected to be good uh, this season, as we saw in the previous races there. They're pretty much one of the slowest teams on the grid. And just not looking good. They brought their first upgrades this weekend, got into Q2 with Ocon, but in, in the race they were just being overtaken pretty much every single lap. Uh, it's shown in the TV. Uh, I mean, that's that's kind of what we expected from, from Alpine for, for this weekend. And then, then there's Williams, who obviously lost, almost lost two chassis in a single weekend after 
not being able to have two cars in the Grand Prix because of a broken chassis last weekend. So I don't really know what to think about that team. They may just drive one car from FP1 in China. Uh, hopefully not, but it's looking very bad for Williams. They just don't really have, well, they just don't have the facilities and the, the financial backing to, well, even with the cost cap, that would probably not be ideal for any team, but still, for Williams, this start of the season is probably the worst they could have, well, they could have imagined. And yeah, Sargent is not scoring points anywhere, anywhere near in the future. And Albon, even though he, he did well last year, it's not looking like he would score points this season, at least for now, while the Williams is not very competitive. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to give myself the point here, but it's just, there's just, uh, well, there's no, there's no team that just, just shines as the least impressive. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's say Alban. Well, that that crash was, I mean, not really his fault. Obviously, that was a stupid thing to be there. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't gain anything from being there if Ricardo wouldn't crash into him. He would still lose the position, even though he was almost alongside. Albon still, in in all scenarios, would would not just remain on the outside. That would result in crash either way. And and unfortunately that that happened. But I don't think Albon would have scored points if it wasn't for the crash. I, I think like P thirteen was probably on the table at most. And yeah, Sargent obviously not performing, but those are just. Well, that's bad luck for Alban and just incompetency from Williams to keep Sargent for this year when they don't even believe in him. Obviously, they, that Australia kind of destroys the, the last bits of confidence that Sargent had. And I just, I just don't feel like they should... Well, if they if they re-signed him, they just should have trusted him. Well, like, that Australia just decision was just so bad. I keep talking about it every single week, and I'm just probably going to keep do, uh, talking about it until Sargent is gone. Because if if you're if you're resigning him for next year, obviously, obviously, they believe in, in him to improve in, in his second season. They're just not even giving him a chance. And they're just watching him crash every single weekend. Just not good. I mean, if he manages to do any, the entire season without being dropped, it's already uh, a victory for him, in my opinion. I don't feel like he's going to be there next year. Maybe even a mid-season swap with some junior from Mercedes. You never know. It's just, yeah. Um, um, it's not looking good for Sargent. Just overall for Williams. Yeah, I, I don't know which team to give the points to, honestly. Um... I would honestly go with Sauber just to not give points to me or Ajax. I know that he would argue with me if he was here. And I don't want to give myself points just because he's not here. And yeah, that would just not feel fair. So I'm just going to give it to Sauber just so I, that I don't have to give him or myself points in, the, in a decision that I'm not fully like confident in. And I'm just not like backing... Oh, sorry, I just, yeah, no points. Okay, why did I have to do color twice in a row? Least impressive driver, Perez is just not, well, that was one of the most impressive Perez weekends that I've seen in a while. He was up there with Max in qualifying in the race, was, well, not at Max's level, obviously no one expected him to be on Max's level, but still, P2, pretty, pretty comfy P2 as well. And um, there was nothing to worry about for, for Perez for the, for the Grand Prix. Um, so yeah, good, good for Checo. Increases the chances for remaining in the Red Bull for next year. But yeah, um, I still would like to see some other driver in. Uh, yeah, Sainz is not an impressive driver either. I mean, P P4 in qualifying, P3 in the race, that's pretty much maximized. For his weekend there. And yeah, so um lead impressive driver, who would I give it to? Um 
Difficult to tell, honestly. Um, probably PS3. I think I expected a lot more from PS3. And it just wasn't anywhere near Orlando this weekend. And uh, yeah, especially compared to last year. He was so impressive. The first podium uh, all on P2 in qualifying. I expected more from PS3 this weekend. And it just wasn't there. And it got overtaken in the last few laps by, well, Mr crash on the last lap dude so uh, i mean yeah just not very impressive from pastry well it was a horrible weekend just probably the least impressive driver out of anyone um yeah no points here uh most impressive team not Haas, not Tarosso, not mclaren not ferrari not aston not mercedes not williams not alpine not sauber Actually, probably going to give it to Red Bull, just... I expected them to win this race. I expect Max to win this race and get the ball position. I didn't, ex I didn't expect them to be that comfy in the lead so Perez can get comfy in B2. That was the perfect weekend for Red Bull. I'm going to give them the most impressive team, even though we can expect them to dominate. It's just that, yeah, after last race, uh, they just came in and just destroyed the competition. Good job from Red Bull. Most impressive team. Uh, Red Bull, so no points. And most impressive driver. Hmm. This is difficult. Uh, actually, honestly, I would give it to, I would give it to Perez. Uh, in the context that you don't expect Perez to do what he did. In this, especially on this track that he did so bad last year, he came in almost took pull from Max. Comfy P2 in the race, that's what Red Bull wants from him. Uh, Red Bull won from him, and he just got it, no problem. P completely fine weekend. I there's nothing you can say, nothing bad you can say about Chaco's weekend. Honestly, he just was the most impressive driver. I don't think anyone is in the conversation. Uh, let's be honest, like, you, know, you pick signs, like, he, he just won the last race, he beat Charles in both, both, well, all the sessions pretty much, and, uh, yeah, he got a podium and beat Charles by one place, that's, yeah, kind of what you can expect from signs, I mean, yeah, uh, Max, obviously you expect him to win every single weekend, so, uh, a win is, well, <laughs> not that impressive. I mean, yeah, Norris, good weekend, just, yeah, unfortunately, I held up by the strategy, but not the most impressive driver either. So, know that, I mean, we expected him to be, well, best of the rest. He was, that was, that was the case. Alonso, I mean, you cannot judge it by Stroll, because Stroll is just incompetent right now, and it has been for, well, two seasons now. So, so yeah, Stroll holding the team down I don't, I don't know i can't give it to, to alonzo because well it's kind of those things that you expect from alonzo but not the weekend that i expect from from perez i mean perez was just impressive my, my most impressive driver was perez i i didn't think i would say this after this weekend but it's it's, it's the truth and yeah no points extra prediction ferrari double podium didn't happen Ferrari pit stop issues did not happen, so that's a four to four for this weekend. So it's twenty points for me and fifteen for AJX. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> this is the first time he was able to equal me in uh, in points for for the Grand Prix. So good job from from you, Captain. And maybe you can start turning this around and beating me in the next few races so the title fight can go on through the entire season. Yeah, um, that's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us going forward. And yeah, until next time, see ya.